who are watching from home that there are people here, that I'm not just standing up and speaking to an empty sanctuary with a lovely choir. So, how are you? Yes. To the people who are joining us from home, I hope that you can join us in person sometime soon. I am Reverend Barbara Hess. I am joined today by Karen Ducharme, our choir director, our lovely choir, our wonderful choir. Uh, Linda Pierce, our director of faith formation. Jay Ducharme, our technical guru. Richard Zyra, who does everything. Everything. Well, you didn't know that when uh, you signed up as head usher, it include mopping the floor when it, it, there's rain too. God bless you for it. Uh, we have, uh, let's see now, Robbie LaPlante is our liturgist, and this is Earth Day and Choir Appreciation Sunday. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Whoever you are and wherever you are on your life journey and faith journey, you are welcome here at UCC Second Congregational Church. Welcome. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. My brother was an amazing man. He was always smiling, always happy, greeted everyone, was well known. It was, he was pretty amazing. He unexpectedly died um, when he was just before he turned 40. Um, and it was a very, very sad day, obviously. It was very unexpected. But when he walked into his service, which was huge, um, they did it at a college that he caught, taught, uh, that he was a basketball coach for. But when they when you walked in, it was, it was totally filled. But the neatest thing was that the entire auditorium was filled with daffodils, his favorite flower, and it just made it feel good. Today I found a, a quick poem on daffodils, it's actually by William Wadsworth, and I wanted to share it with you today. I wandered lowly as a cloud that floats on high o'er vales and hills, while all at once I saw a crowd, a host of golden daffodils. Beside the lake, beneath the trees, fluttering and dancing in the breeze. Continuous as the stars that shine and twinkle on the Milky Way, they stretched in never-ending line along the margin of a bay. Ten thousand saw I at a glance, tossing their heads in sprightly dance. The waves beside them danced, but they outdid the sparkling waves in glee. A poet could not be but gay in such jocund company. I gazed and gazed, but little thought what wealth to sh the show to me had brought. For oft when on my couch I lie, in vacant or in pensive mood, they flash upon that inward eye, which is the bliss of solitude. And then my heart with pleasure fills and dances with the daffodils. Today is Earth's Sun to Earth Day, and we're celebrating Earth Day today. I thought this was a perfect reminder that no matter where we are and how we feel, God gives us gifts of daffodils and nature and earth, and we, should, we are blessed. Amen. one another in love and friendship from your view. God loves all creation. Every single one of us is a child of God.
confession and the Lord's Prayer. Let us confess our sins to God and to one another. Gracious and generous God, you have had me so forgive your love. Forgive us, we pray, when we don't want to see or recognize your gifts for what they are. When we think we have some power or a title tied to us. When we take what you give and make them for more. When we pour our gifts and do not hear a mournful cry from those around us. We are not desire for more but what to let this is through a good Jesus. Teach us the way we thought about this. And grant us the spirit of contentment that we may be grateful for your provision and share the gifts and give the others. As we are blessed by you, so may we be the blessed by all of us. In the name of your precious gift, our Savior Jesus Christ. We ask this in the name of Jesus' name. Taught us for Christ's sake. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us the day of our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the God is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. God, do not set your hopes on the uncertainty of riches, but rather on the riches of God, who provides us everything for our enjoyment. Be rich in good works, generous and ready to share. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Our, our psaltery uh, reading today Sing praises to the Lord, O you, his faithful ones, and give thanks to his holy name. The Lord put a song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. Many will sing here and put their trust in the Lord. I will sing your steadfast love, O Lord, forever. With my mouth, I will proclaim your faithfulness to all generations. The prophet is the son of the Lord. I will sing of love and justice to you, O Lord. I will make music. They shall celebrate the name of your abundant goodness and shall sing aloud of your justice. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God all my life long. Praise the Lord. Sing to the Lord a new song. His praise is the assembly of the faithful. Praise is in the Chinese symbols. Praise is in the loud Baptist symbols. Let everything that breathes praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The Old Testament this morning is Genesis 1, 20 to 22 and 24 to 31. In this passage in Genesis was written more than 500 years before the birth of Jesus. At the time it was written, the Jews were being held captive by the Babylonians, approximately 500 miles from what had been their home in Jerusalem. The Jews were held captive for 70 years, and in this passage was written to remind them that even in their darkest cap-off days, God was sovereign. The sun in the sky and every plant and living creature on earth was under the loving and watchful eye of the Creator. We can look to nature to be reminded that God has promised to never leave us nor forsake us. Jesus died on the cross and was resurrected to prove the darkness 
and death will never be victorious. Day will always follow night, and spring will always follow winter. So here the um, the Genesis from the um, Bible reading. Then God commanded, let the water be filled with many kinds of living beings, and let the air be filled with birds. So God created the great sea monsters, all kinds of creatures that live in the water, and all kinds of birds, and God was pleased with what he saw. He blessed them all and told the creatures that live in the water to reproduce and to fill the sea. And he told the birds to increase in number. Evening passed and morning came. That was the fifth day. Then God commanded, let the earth produce all kinds of animal life, domestic and wild, large and small. And it was done. So God made them all. And he was pleased with what he saw. Then God said, now we will make human beings. We will be like we will be like us and resemble us. They will have power over the fish, the birds, all the animals, domestic and wild, large and small. So God created like himself. He created them male and female. Bless them and said, have many children so that your descendants will live in over all over the earth and bring it under their control. I am putting you in charge of the fish, the birds, and all the wild animals. I have provided all kinds of grain and all kinds of fruit for you to eat. But for all the wild animals and for all the birds, I have provided grass and leafy plants for food and it is well, it was done. God looked at everything he had made, and he, he was very pleased. Evening passed, and morning came. That was the sixth day. And so the whole universe was completed. By the seventh day, God finished what he had been doing and stopped working. He blessed the seventh day, and set it apart as a special day because that day he had completed his creation and stopped working. And that is how the universe was created. Amen. Thank you, Robert. The Gospel reading today is from Matthew chapter 6, verses 19 to 21 and 25 to 35. This passage includes some of the best advice in the entire Bible. Quote, and can any of you by worrying add a single hour to your span of life? And why do you worry about clothing? It goes on to say that if God is so loving and so watchful that God would care about the birds of the air, the flowers of the field, aren't we of more value than they? Bad things will happen, and bad things might even happen to us. But through it all, God is with us. Hear the words of Matthew, or the Gospel of Matthew. Do not store up for yourselves treasure on earth, where moth and rust consume, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasure in heaven, where neither moth nor rust consumes, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat and what you will drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is, life more than, is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap, nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your span of life? 
And why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field. How they grow, they neither toil nor spin, yet Solomon, in all of his glory, was never dressed like one of those. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today, and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? Therefore do not worry, saying, what will we eat, or what will we drink, or what will we wear? For it is the Gentiles who strive for all those things. And indeed, your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But strive first for the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all things will be given to you as well. So do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring worries of its own. Today's trouble is enough for today. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, God. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable and pleasing to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Okay, before I start the uh, sermon, I've got to say that there is one thing that I tell you never, ever, 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 ever to do, and I did it this morning. So just to uh, clear the air, what I say is that we should always read the Bible and then determine how we should live. There are other churches, I'll leave it at that, that determine who it is that they think that God should love and God should care about. And then they go into the Bible to find something that will back up what they're saying. That's called proof texting and it's a no-no. That's exactly what I did for the psalm reading today. But the psalm reading today, I think it was acceptable because every single one of the psalms that I chose was for music, about music, and in appreciation for our choir director and our choir. So I hope you will forgive me. Amen. All right. Nature will teach us how to live if we'll only pay attention. Earth Day was yesterday, April 22nd. There are parts of the United States which seem to have bright blue, beautiful skies and brilliant sunshine 365 days a year. And while as a New Englander, sometimes that seems like it would be nice, it would be appealing, especially since it's April 23rd and during this April vacation, this year's April vacation, my daughter and son-in-law, it was, what, a week or two ago, uh, went snow skiing on Okemo Mountain with their children. And since it is New England, the next day, they went kayaking on Fra uh, Webster Lake in Franklin, New Hampshire. So, how can I, you know, this is New England. There was snow, but the air was 75 degrees. And we love the fact that we have all those different seasons and all those recreational uh, possibilities. But what I want to mention is that the places in the United States that have sunshine 365 days a year also tends to be places where this landscape often in uh, the spring, late spring and summer, are various shades of brown. And in certain seasons, we hear stories about drought and forest fires. This is where we can look to nature to get our first principle on how to live. Keep in mind that those places that have sun pretty much 365 days a year have the various shades of brown. So when we are going, 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 passionately pursuing something, it could be a job, it could be a kid's sports team, volunteering in other, some other noble way, and after pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing and giving 100%, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, what happens? Burnout is a problem. When that happens, the person who is burned out doesn't want to do 
anything. That's like the sun shining constantly and then everything turning brown. What happens when these people who are going, 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 going nonstop, what happens when they crash and burn? The people around them wonder what happened. All of a sudden, the burned out person doesn't want to be involved anymore. Their physical and emotional energy has been expended. And the people who've gotten used to them giving 100%, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, are left with someone who is tired of giving and the people around them don't have a backup plan. The various shades of brown in areas of the Southwest caution us about going and going and going until we burn out. Here up in the Northeast, northeast are cold, snowy winters. Sometimes make it seem like everything is dead. At least dead from November through February and March. Many of the trees lose their leaves and the stark landscape appears completely devoid of life. Then suddenly, around March and early April, crocuses appear, daffodils spring forth. Soon we have forsythia, tulips, hyacinths, lilacs. Those plants weren't dead during the winter. They were just hibernating. They were just resting. Jesus knew the importance of resting. There are many stories within the Bible where it specifically says that either before or directly after Jesus had important work to do, Jesus would go off and pray. This sense of establishing a rhythm is important for us to understand. Jesus modeled the type of behavior we should live. Resting and praying gave Jesus a chance to recharge his batteries, a chance to go back to his work refreshed and rejuvenated. Everything should be in moderation. We have people who were down in Florida, down in uh, southern states, and they hopefully were refreshed and rejuvenated, and it's good to see you back where you belong. In the Gospel of Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and the disciples, excuse me, we hear the story about Jesus and the disciples in the boat on the Sea of Galilee. When a sudden storm came up, in each one of the three Gospels, we find that Jesus was asleep in the back of the boat. Jesus knew that he was going to have work to do. So he intentionally rested when he could. What is the advice we give to new parents? Sleep. sleep when the baby sleeps, yes. Easier said than done. I always felt when my two little ones were little that that was my time to get everything done. And just as I would finish and sit down, I would hear the stirrings and they were up. I was putting my feet down to rest just when I was called upon to take it up and do more. If Jesus lived in moderation, working, resting, praying, working, resting, praying, why do we feel that we shouldn't do the same? Why do we feel that Jesus might need rest? Others we might know might need rest, but we don't. Is it ego? Is it that we're afraid to stop the busyness and take a break? We won't be able to pick it up and work again? Recently, we've had a lot of parishioners in the hospital for surgery. I've encouraged each person to follow the doctor's orders and rest in order to heal. I speak from experience. When I've had surgery, the doctor has said to lay low for two to three weeks. I've assumed that that was for everyone else except me. When the doctor recommended resting for two to three weeks, I would fully 100% rest for one week. And then I would go back to doing everything 100%. And I would wonder why a month later, I still wasn't feeling good. For each person I had visited in the hospital, I have encouraged them to do as I said, and not what I have typically done. Resting doesn't come naturally to some. 
There's a story about a junior lumberjack. He was chopping and chopping away at a tree and getting nowhere. A more experienced lumberjack approached the novice and suggested that the lumberjack stop and sharpen his blade. The younger lumberjack replied, I'm too busy to take time to sharpen the ax. And that's what we do. Some of us erroneously think that busyness proves our value, our worthiness. It is almost a point of pride when a person complains about how busy they are. Notice they're not talking about how much they've gotten accomplished, just how busy they are. Believe me, I've been there and I've done that. My question is this, what do we lose out on when we are so busy? Perhaps opportunities to build relationships. You know, family activities, family dinners. That could be biological family or it could be church family. What else gets cast aside when we are busy? Possibly the creative projects we need. We need to fill our soul. In Genesis, God instructs us to rest on the Sabbath. The word Sabbath comes from the Hebrew sabbath, which means to rest or cease from work. It's the Hebrew word for Shabbat, Shabbat, and the word from which we get sabbatical. Last year, I was allowed to take a three-month sabbatical, and it was, quote, just what the doctor needed, ordered. It was just what I needed. In this case, I guess that I can say that it was just what Jesus ordered. God doesn't need exhausted people. When we are exhausted, our immunity is loosened, lessened, and we're more susceptible to everything that comes along. From the common cold to viruses, which are far more deadly. There's nothing holy about being exhausted. Right here in our church, we're lucky to have Karen Ducharme and our, as our choir director, and several people who are here week in and week out, bless you, as our choir. Gail Haas, Robbie LaPlan, Judy Ford, Jim Castro, Beth Stendicki, Karen Beals, Jay Ducharme, Sam Masood, Katrina Bingham Moss, and Elizabeth Monte. Did I miss Seth Ward, Seth Ward. Of course, Seth Ward. Um, from September, through May or June, Karen and the choir provide our spectacular music ministry. And it is a ministry. The music highlights the scripture and the sermon and allows us to hear the word of God in a new way. The choir usually sings until the end of June, but our students move home from college in early May, which is why we are doing it a little bit early. Just as the students get time off from college, Karen and the choir members, other choir members, get time off to enjoy the summer. It allows all to come back in September, rested and refreshed. In seminary, in the preaching class, they recommended reading through the next week's scripture readings, Sunday afternoon or Monday. They suggested that we pray for guidance and then go about our day whether it's taking a walk, going grocery shopping, reading a book. It was thought that by reading the scripture and praying, that would be in the back of our minds as we went about the rest of our day. It was thought that by going about our day, we would have aha moments when we could use everyday occurrences to illustrate scripture. Taking time allow, away allows the Holy Spirit to speak to us in ways that we, it can't if we sing, we're singing every week or preaching every week or doing anything every week, on and on and on and on and on. In a similar fashion, that's why attending church every Sunday, what every, ah, let me back up, that's what attending church should be doing every Sunday for the parishioners. You, this is the equivalent of reading scripture and praying 
and then going about the rest of your week. <clears throat> this gives you an opportunity to listen to the Word of God and have that in the back of your mind so that as you go through the rest of your week, you might have aha moments. As the week progresses, the Holy Spirit will work in the back of your mind, giving clarity to what we hear, heard the previous Sunday. We can't give our best when our resources have been depleted. And little things are a lot more bothersome when we're running on empty. When we are rested and in right relationship with God and with those around us, we are filled with energy. And we are, when we are filled with energy, we also tend to be filled with joy and optimism and enthusiasm. It's good for the entire church when we are all involved and all working to keep us the beacon of hope here in Westfield. If you've spent too much time on the sidelines, letting others do the work that you could do, let this be your invitation to get more involved. If you're the person who has picked up the slack because the work still needs to get done, consider this your invitation to step back just a tiny bit. She's fine. Bethany, she's fine. Okay. Maybe she's not fine. And that's why we have the uh, diaper changing station in the bathroom. So if you have been letting others do the work, please step up. If you have been doing all the work, this is your permission to step out a tiny bit. I don't mean to stop what you're doing altogether. It's always the case of moderation. God doesn't need exhausted people, but if we're doing the right amount of things to be a beacon of hope, more people need to get involved. New blood means new energy and new ideas. If you're coming to Sunday service, that's great. God bless you. But if there's something more that you could do either here at church or out in the community, Monday through Saturday, that's something to think about as well. As we go through this coming week, let's notice greed sprouts, which are pushing their way up through the dark soil, through the dark soil toward light, through the dark soil to warmth, the warmth of the sun, S-U-N. Let those greed sprouts serve as a reminder that darkness around us can be viewed as an opportunity to rest, or it can be viewed as an opportunity to push through the darkness toward the light, toward, toward the warmth of the sun, S-O-N. If we take time to rest and rejuvenate, focusing on the sun, S-O-N, we'll be in a better place. We know from the resurrection story that Jesus overcame death and light will always, always, always overcome the darkness. The darker the night, the brighter the stars. The more desolate the winter, the more enthusiastically we welcome the spring. The scripture reading this morning ended with, so do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring worries of its own. Today's trouble is enough for today. We'll have a full choir for a few more Sundays. We'll have a partial choir and Karen through the end of June. During the summer, we'll have CDs of music. And in September, we'll have Karen and the full choir back, rested, refreshed, and ready to lead us with the music ministry of this church. Don't look at darkness in a sense of wilderness or emptiness as a bad thing. It's a time of rest. It's a time of reflection, and it's like an incubator for what great ideas are to come. Wherever you are in life, push through your darkness and reach for the sun. S-O-N. Amen. Amen.
Drew Sharm and our fabulous choir. Praise of joy, prayers of joy for the Damien, that is Shannon, our secretary's first grandchild. Damien arrived safely, 21 and a half inches long and eight pounds, eight ounces. <laughs> no, that's good, that's good. Why, prayers of joy that uh, babies are in the congregation and prayers of gratitude that their parents bring them. Prayers for Andrew for his own health issues as well as situations surrounding him. Prayers for people everywhere who are dealing with mental health issues. Prayers for those who are still dealing with respiratory infections. Prayers for Nancy's grandson, Tyler. Prayers for those who are preparing for or recovering from surgery, Danny, as well as Andrew's mother, Kathy, and Sean's mother, Linda. Nancy Rogers, prayers for Doug Rogers. Prayers as he starts a journey going to boot camp for Army National Guard tomorrow. God bless him. Prayers for, of gratitude for all the first-time visitors and visitors who return. Good to see uh, Harriet and Barbara and Tim. Wonderful to have you. Continued prayers for Gina, Emily, Suzanne, Melissa, Amanda, Costa, Cheyenne, the people of Ukraine, and those affected by violence. The crazy, crazy violence that has occurred from honest mistakes these past weeks. I will be praying and there will be a time of silence where you can lift up names and situations or you can just lift them up to God in the silence. But there will be opportunities for you to add your own prayers. Let us be together in a period of grace and gratitude joys, and concerns. Gracious God, we thank you for the opportunity to worship together. We rejoice that the flowers and the new green shoots teach us about resurrection. We thank you for Karen Ducharm and each and every member of our choir. May they feel your presence in their lives when they're away from us, and may they return to us in September, refreshed and rejuvenated. God, in the silence that follows, we lift up names and situations that haven't yet been made public. Prayers for Sudan um, and Sophia and her children who live here, who are from Sudan, and she still has family there. Prayers for the people of Sudan and Sahara who lives here with her family, but she still has family back in Sudan. Prayers for all of them. Lord, we are so grateful for your Son, Jesus, who came to earth to save us from our sins. We thank you for the love, God, you show us. You fill us with your love. We pray that we may pass that on to everyone we come in contact with, that we may be able to change the course of life and the world, get rid of the negativity that is running wild everywhere. We pray for peace. Pray, Lord, you come again quick. We ask all this in your name. Amen. Help us to look more closely at our own lives, at the many ways in which they are driven and demands are placed upon them. Remind us again of the ministry and mission of Christ, who came that we might have life. We have offered prayers for family and friends, for situations near and far. We have asked for your help, your healing, your blessing. Help us look at moderation, when to work hard and when to rest, reflect, pray, and then return to the work we have set before us. Let us look at the seasons of the Northeast. If we have been resting, it's time to start working. If we've been working, it might be time to rest. God, you know what we need. Help us to receive and help us to give and when to do each one of those things. Walk with us on this pathway. Help us look at the barriers that have prevented us from following Christ and doing your work here on earth. Guide us through the barriers that we may become stronger in our faith and our service to you. 
We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Pledges and donations may be made by accessing the church website, www.secondchurchwestfield.org. Second is spelled out, so it's www.secondchurchwestfield.org, and clicking on Donate, and we can receive donations 24 hours a day, seven days a week. May we give out of the love that we have for Jesus Christ, so that others may share in our imperishable and unfading inheritance of hope and life. Please join me in the prayer of dedication is found in the bulletin. God of great mercy, accept our offerings, given out of what is more precious than gold, our faith in you, giver of hope and life. And through these gifts, reveal the risen Christ in acts of mercy, love, and joy. Amen.
rendering to no one evil for evil, strengthening the faint-hearted, supporting the weak, helping the afflicted, honoring all persons, loving and serving the Lord, and rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. And before the benediction, uh, everyone is invited into the Founders Room for a special reception for the choir. In great mercy, God has given us a new birth into a living hope, for it is the risen Christ who stands in our midst and says, Peace be with you. We go forth to walk the path of new life and living hope, and may the peace of the risen Christ be with us.